how we doing folks, the old cougar here um, let's talk crew skills, shall we? Indeed. And uh, the reason I want to talk about this is, this is a replay that I've had in the 50TP. And I'll explain why I'm using this replay to show you a little example and how crew skills can help. Now that's wee fast LT100, so we need to get rid of him. Right, that's a threat out the problem. Yes, he was a one shot. Did I kill steal it? Not really, because those two other had just fired and the other one had missed his shot because it bounced on Angaby, so whether he was a competent player, it was just bad RNG, whatever. But it was a one shot, I seen the opportunity, I took it. If you look at the minimap, you'll see that our TD is sitting away at the back in the corner and he's hiding behind the wall and the brickwork and he's not going out to defend. You see him now? He's not going out to assist this guy. Now, I'm in a bad position here because I've got three big heavy tanks and a, <laughs> an E100, a T110E3 and an IS-4 and I don't want to be anywhere near them. Uh, yeah. Is that an IS-4? No. I can't see what it is, because I don't use what the tanks are, I just have the the health damage on, right? There's the 183 sitting on B with the... What was that? Standard B? The standard B that was at the far end of him. There's the 110 E3. I don't want to get hit by that bugger away he's missed. I just backed up, but it's... Uh, it's mad games, so I've been hit with the, the damage claws. Mm. Right, where's this 183? That's a 183, he's away. Right, we can nip through B. Where did that standard B go to? Where is he? He's away over the back end of A with the... Now what is that that's left? The IS-4 or the ST-1? It's one of the two. There is an IS-4, there's an ST-1, there's a 103, E-100, mm. right, we've got B, right, that's the ST-1 away, so if that's the ST-1 away, it must be the IS-4 that's over at the back of A, and this has to be the 103, you know, we get hit by him, but I had my damage reflector on, so anything that he fired at me reflected back and caused damage. He was a one shot, so the chances are he was going to die. It's now two on two. They are 500 points, well, just less than 500 points in front. Here's the old big E100, don't want to get hit by him, and he missed. Luckily, he missed. Now, that means I can get in to see, stop the clock, and stop the points from building up on the reds. Um, 1372. I still have my full health, but I don't know where the IS-4s went to. But uh, he will show up. There he is. There's the IS-4 there. And he comes round, drop one into him, and I had a ghost shell. But he hit me for 423. I didn't click all the way. I meant to click my right shift button to get my reflector on because he's got me, he's at 217 now so if he fires he's going to reflect some shots on him if he fires if I don't get a shot into him which I do and kill him off so another higher tier tank destroyed now the E100 is uh, a feather hit away from dying and he's dead now but the reason I wanted to show this replay, especially in the 50 TP, grinding for the uh, the last tier 10 in the line, it's only 2,400 damage. I killed three, and I earned 3,000 credits. It is mad games, and I was only third place. But the main point about this is crew skills. Where do they come in? 
If you look, you'll see that this tank doesn't have the top engine, doesn't have the top tracks, and it only has one piece of equipment. They improved the gun rammer. The improved modules will be the next one, but that's going to cost me 237,500 credits just to equip that. Now, I don't want to use that, and I just want to prove that crew skills assisted me and getting the damage, getting the hits, and playing the game with a, a near stock tank. A near stock tank. One piece of equipment, and no top engine, and no top tracks. The reason for that being, we will just show you. Right, now, let's talk about crew skills and how they assisted me in that battle that you just sat and watched. Now if you look at the bottom line, you'll see crew is the very first thing. So we'll click on crew and it'll bring us up all the different skill levels that we can achieve. The first one you want to do is mentor because that increases your crew XP earned in battle up to 7%. You need to do that first to build your crew skill levels up. The next one that you want to work on there, there are four different sections and you can see there's lights, mediums, heavies and TDs. But the next thing you want to do is your repairs. It will decrease the repair time up to 28% at level 7. After that, firefighting accelerates your fire extinguishing up to 42%. Great for putting out fires quicker than having not trained. After that, you want to do camouflage. Up to 21% addition on your concealment level. And I'll discuss that later on and why that's quite important. After that, you want to do precision fire. Fire three shots in a row and deal damage with each shot to get a 35% chance, up at level 7, of dealing maximum damage with the next shot. That has to be one of your first five that you train. And you can do that in your light tanks. And the mediums, you want to do rage. Accelerates a gun reloading by 7%. Next shot after you destroy an enemy tank. It's self-explanatory. After that, you want to jump into your heavy and train up your close combat master. It increases the turret turn by 7%. Your adrenaline rush is next, accelerates the gun loading by 7%. When the tank has less than 15% of your health points remaining, great thing if you're down to your last couple of hits, or your last hit preferably. After that you want to do fast capture. If you play a lot of supremacy, this speeds the capture of the base up by 7%. Now you will notice that if another member of your team is in that base with you and they have it trained, it goes up to 10%. After that you want Sniper, Deadly Accuracy, and then I'll click through in procession what the orders they are, and I'll link them later on. I'll put a line up of what I would suggest to train in order, but you can adapt it to yourself. Everybody's different, but this is the ones I've found have assisted me during the build-up of training the, clue, the crews right up to full level 7 throughout your lights, your mediums, your heavies and your TDs. Now you'll see that the lights, the, the crew skills that they, your um, fast capture, your deadly accuracy, your uh, hasty shot, they're all trained when you're playing in a light tank. Uh, your next one is your levels of crew skills in your mediums, then in your heavies, and then in your TDs. But these mastered skills are effective for all tanks that you play, with any level of crew mastery. So you can buy a new tank and it's only got 50% crew, but if you've got these levels trained up to level 7, then they will work in effect with your tank while you're training that crew up to level 100. The only thing is, until your tank reaches level 100, you can't assist 
in boosting the trained skill levels up. <coughs> Excuse me. But mentor is the very first one you want to use to train that up. So jump into your medium, play as many battles as you can until you get your mentor badge up to level 1 and then keep building on it and building on it and building on it. You can spend gold, you can spend credits doing it up, but if you use your crew XP boosters that you can pick up and use them every time you're training something in a tank, whether it be a light, a medium, a heavy or a TD, get your crew skills up. They are a must. Now, as I was discussing earlier, regarding crew skills and concealment level, we take the 113 GFT for instance, and we click on the stats for it, you'll see that without camo nets, my concealment level stationary is 51, while moving is 41, and when firing it's 7. But if I switch it to camo nets, it goes up to 65 stationary, 48 moving, and 9 while stationary and firing. But the bonus has a 7% concealment to it. But it's added double 14% if it stays stationary for 3 seconds. Right? Now, in effect, what that does is, if I stay stationary for 3 seconds, I have a 14% bonus added. And that gives it from the value is 65, it puts it up to 74. But train your crew to level 7 and your concealment has a 21% added bonus. And that gives you a camo rating of 89.6. So training your crew in your TDs for concealment, camouflage it's tabbed under, but it's your concealment you're working on, adds that extra bonus. So from 65 with a fully trained crew and camo nets, it jumps to 89.6. It is a must. Don't go out in your tank bare arsed. Put camouflage on it. It helps. And train your crew in concealment. Make that one of your top five trained crew skills. Mentor repairs, fire extinguisher, camouflage, and then, uh, what was the other one? Your, your triple shot, where you, you cause more damage after you've hit the tank for three times. The, the, the name of it escapes me at the moment. <laughs> I did mention it earlier on. But, yeah, concealment, camouflage, it is a must when you're training your crew skills. And as I said before, it plays a part in all of your uh, tanks, whether they're crew skills level 50, you've just bought the tank, you've just ground it up, the, the one pre prior to it, you've bought the tank, you've jumped in and it's got crew skills 50%. But if you've got all your crew skills trained from your previous tanks that you've battled in, up to level 7, or level 4, or level 5, whatever, but you can see the effect the percentages has on it. It plays a part in all those tanks. So if you've got a new tank with only 50% crew skills, and you've got all these trained, it assists. So get your crews up. Train them as fast as you can. Use credits if need be. Don't use gold, just use the credits and your crew boosters. So if you're training in a light tank, and you haven't got your light tank skills up to level 7, hit the crew boosters. It all helps. Have fun out there, folks. Have fun. <laughs>